No problem. So we just wanted to offer a chance this morning. I, I know we've had a chance for questions and answers after each presentation, but just after that short break, maybe for a chance to maybe reflect on, as John said, you know, what might you want to tweet? What might you want to use comms team to support with? Um, have you thought of what you might want to put in a tweet? What picture you might use? Or do you have any reflections just even from what Les said this morning and what Paul said just around, what are the things that are jumping out for you in terms of how you might spread the word about your poster? Um, just to get started, the things that jump out and every time Paul has spoken about, we've met with Paul a couple of times about the social media stuff, the things that jump out for me are the things that give me the fear. Um, so the things around consent, the bit around what happens if I get negative feedback about what I'm putting on or does this display the values that I want to present? Uh, what does it say about me? What does it say about the organisation? And that is always, these are sort of my biggest fears, Paul. And I think what you said about the, the one that you mentioned in Pride Week, what I, you'd mentioned before around that picture was instead of maybe just putting up the Pride rainbow or the colours, it actually reflected the values of the organisation um, rather than just using a logo. So I think that was really powerful for me just thinking about what we put on needs to reflect our values. Um, but there is a bit of a fear for me around do my values match what everybody else's are, etc. So my reflections in terms of what you've spoken about match the kind of quality improvement model, just in terms of really planning what we want to put out, planning what our project wants to, what, what are the, and the must shoulds and the coulds less. Don't need to say it all on Twitter, but just put out the must messages um, and as be concise. But there's something about me about reflecting on the stuff that I've put out, looking at the analytics, looking at who's engaging, what kind of feedback are you getting back? And if it's not the right type of stuff, then we don't repost it, you know? And I've never had, I've never had anything awful coming back. Um, and I think that's probably a, a reassurance that quite often we're, as EHPs, we're putting out positive messages, we're putting out good stories. They don't get a lot of negatives, but we do need to make sure that there's governance around that. And what we wanted to add just as groups is that if there are professions that have got their own pages, then there'll be governance around those pages um, and what should be happening. So just to, to link in with those groups, but also to link in with people like Paul, if you are worried at all about what you're what you're wanting to post. So that was my reflections, Paul. And just to reassure people, I, I do use Twitter, but I do have weeks where I think I can't, I don't know what to put on. I don't know whether it's the right thing to do. Um, so just to, I suppose, look for support around that was my reflection. I just wondered if there was anything else that people were thinking around uh, or wanted to share. Pauline? Yeah, just that bit about, you touched on it already, that don't feel like you're on your own in terms of putting that first post out. You've probably got somebody in your team that's already applied for social media, so somebody will have already filled out the paperwork for the Twitter page or Facebook or whatever it is. You know, so so write your post, but just do it on Word and share it with a few colleagues first of all before you kind of take that tentative step. It is scary, and I think that was one of the best things that came across for me today, both with Les and with Paul. It's okay to be nervous when you're giving a presentation, and as Paul said, sometimes you put out things with good intention, but it maybe just doesn't land right. And I know I kind of represent Fidelity on this call, and we had a very recent example where somebody took to Twitter because we're living in a world where patients can't get access to treatment. So sometimes it doesn't matter what you post, they're going to just mm -hmm. latch on to that. And it's about how you just interact with that back. But there's lots of support and help. So tap in with maybe your practice development team or ask line managers, maybe who's got that kind of responsibility that can give you a wee bit of support. Val, lovely to have you back, Val. Oh, thank you. So nice to see you all and coming to the end of this programme finally. Well done to everybody. Um, no, I, I, thanks, uh, Pauline. Totally agree with that. Um, it's quite nerve wracking going on um, Twitter for the first time. Um, I tend just to use it for professional stuff and not so much for personal. Um, but one thing that I've done, and I don't know if other people do this as well, but I was using it more on my phone. So I was going on Twitter on my phone and I had just a kind of notes page and I kind of just kind of bundled up different, um, I guess, kind of hashtags when I'm wanting to kind of 
tag somebody in so that I'm not having to retype that out all the time and probably make errors as I do that. So if it was on a certain kind of clinical area, I just kind of group them together. If it was another area I'm, I'm tweeting about, I would have I would have others, all the kind of GGC ones linked together as well, the QI ones, for example. Um, and I found that quite helpful. But now, I, you know, on screen and on my phone, it's easier. I just open it up on my um, laptop now and you can, I was just thinking, right, I should just create that list, just transfer that over onto an easy document I can pull up. Um, like, I don't know, uh, post it on, you know, you can have post-its on, on your screen just with, with all the different kind of tags as well. That just makes it a wee bit quicker as well, because probably like other people using uh, Twitter for professional, it's sometimes difficult just to fit it in in the day. Sometimes I reflect back, like I've not really been tweeting for a while and it's just things are just so busy. But if I just try and just have it as part of my day, but try not to do it out of work too much because I fell into that trap and you never escape. <laughs> Putting my kids to bed, waiting them for them to go to sleep and I go on Twitter and it's work-related stuff instead of escaping work. So that's just a wee tip as, as well. Um, maybe trying to kind of keep it as work, but seeing it as work as well, because spreading the word of, of what the work that you're doing, the projects, the patients you're helping, that is really important work as well. And I'm sure that um, your line managers um, would, would support you taking a bit of time out your working day to do that too. But you maybe want to have that conversation so you feel you've got the permission to do that. So that's all. But also just to say hello to everybody. And it's so nice to kind of dip in um, to this scene as I've, I've, um, I'm on to Conman elsewhere at the moment. Oh, it's lovely Thanks. to have you back and it's really good top tip file actually I might steal that one of having the notes page because I think that's the the bit the hashtags are about linking into different discussions that are going on so the hashtag represents a, a chat that's going on and tagging somebody with the at sign um, is, is tagging an account have I described that right Paul yeah yeah just, um, so uh, having the list of those people um, is really really helpful so that top tips are good good anything else this morning you're all just dying to go on and dip into <laughs> social media now, aren't you? <laughs> After this, lunch. This, this is the best thing as a presenter when you say, is there anything else anybody wants to say? And there's total silence. Total silence. Is that the dream, Liz? <laughs> uh... Good. I'm going to hand over to Pauline, who's going to close us up for today. Well, I'll be short and sweet then, soon as it's lunchtime. Um, yeah, no, just to thank everybody for today, you know, especially the presenters, but also for the participants, because as we've all said all day today, Teams is difficult. So people just popping things on chat boxes and coming off mute, just to ask, you know, ask a question and be part of it or give top tips. I think it really helps the flow of these things. And so today it was all about spread the word. And I think sometimes, particularly during COVID, Running projects has been really tough. It's really difficult. And sometimes there's that moment of, oh, thank goodness, I'm just at the end and tempting just to park it. But actually, it's such good work that you want to spend that little bit extra time just packaging it together so that you've maybe got opportunities and presentations sitting, waiting on the sidelines to be able to share that information a wee bit more widely. I know certainly conferences come up all the time and suddenly the deadline is tight to submit a poster and you think I always meant to get round to writing that poster so I would have it sitting ready but I don't so that's one of my takeaways today is to go away and, and try and be a bit more proactive and write up that, that poster in advance maybe you've already got new quality improvement ideas and, and you'll want to kind of take that forward and it's thinking again about how you spread the word after that so a big thank you to everybody for that uh, what we'll do next is we've got quite a lot of resources that are sitting in the chat box from today. So they'll sit on the channel and there's a little bit about presentations and social media and posters. So that'll sit there. And I think we're going to follow that up with an email and a post evaluation survey just to kind of capture your thoughts, maybe even capture some activity that you've had after today's event around about social media that you've maybe had a bit of a go at and what that's felt like and how we can feed that back. We've got one final session. So I think it is tied in to spread the word. This one's about your improvement journey. So what's it been like for you? And we're looking for a, a number of volunteers to maybe kind of tell us a little bit about what their journey has been like. So that doesn't have to be presenting your projects because for some you might not actually be finished, but maybe even just a little bit around about what some of the challenges been, what the barriers mm -hmm. been like, what tools have you used? And you might want to put that in 
in a different format. So we'll send you a wee email just probably by the end of this week, just kind of confirming what we're looking for and what the content of that session will be. And that's on the 5th of October. So I think you've already got the date, but we'll put more information and package that up for you. Yeah, and finally, just to say thank you all and enjoy your lunch. And it was lovely to see everybody today. Thank you.